Welcome to Jero Classroom. In this tutorial, we will learn about light and reflection of light. Light is a form of energy. It is that form of energy which enables us to see. It always propagates or moves in straight lines. Let us now learn the reflection of light. Firstly, what is meant by reflection? The bouncing back of light when it strikes any polished surface is known as reflection of light. Light is reflected according to certain laws. The law of reflection of light is number 1 angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. These angles are measured with the normal. The second law of reflection of light is the incident ray, the reflected ray and normal all lie in same plane. These reflection of light, these laws of reflection of light are applicable to all types of reflecting surfaces including spherical reflecting surfaces. Let us now discuss spherical mirrors. When the reflecting surface is plane, then it is known as plane mirror. Similarly, when curved reflecting surface is there, then it is known as spherical mirror. There are two types of spherical mirrors. The first mirror is concave mirror. A mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outward inwards is known as concave mirror. Convex mirror. A mirror whose reflecting surface is curved outwards, it is known as a convex mirror. A very good example of this kind of mirror is spoon. It can behave both as concave mirror and convex mirror on the way we uh, hold the spoon. Let us now discuss the terminology of spherical mirror. Number one is pole. The center of the reflecting surface is known as pole. It is denoted by P. It may lie, it lies on the reflecting surface. In case of concave mirror, this is the point P, this is pole. In case of convex mirror, this is pole. Second is center of curvature. The center of sphere of which mirror is a part of is known as center of curvature. It is denoted by C. This is center of curvature for concave mirror. This is center of curvature for convex mirror. Radius of curvature. The radius of sphere of which mirror is a part of is known as radius of curvature. In case of convex conv conv mirror, CP, this distance is radius of curvature. In case of convex mirror, this distance, CP, is radius of curvature. Now fourth is principal axis. A line passing through the pole and center of curvature is known as principal axis. This line is the principal axis. This line. Fifth is and the most important is force. The point where all the incident ray parallel to principal axis meet in case of concave mirror or appear to meet in case of convex mirror is known as focus of the mirror. As you can see, these are the rays parallel to principal axis and coming from infinity. After uh, reflecting from the surfaces, they all rays meet at a point in case of concave mirror. This is the point. This point F is known as focus of the mirror in case of concave mirror. When the same case is happening in concave mirror, the rays parallel to principal axis just appear to meet at a point. They are reflected in this direction but when we extend them backward, they appear to meet at a point. This is the point. The important thing to understand in case of convex mirror is the rays are not actually meeting, they just appear to meet. This is shown by the dotted line. This point F is the focus in case of convex mirror. Now focal length. The distance between pole and focus is known as focal length. The distance PF is the focal length of this concave mirror. This distance PF is the focal length of this convex mirror. Now the relation between focal length and radius of curvature of a mirror of a spherical mirror is F is equal to R by 2. So as per this uh, formula the distance PF is half of the distance CP. Let us now understand image formation. To get an image of any point, we need two light rays. When these light rays are reflect, 
intersect or appear to intersect after getting reflected from the mirror, they meet at a point and this point is the image of that very point of which we are making the image. Let us now study the rules of formation of image. Number 1. A ray parallel to principal axis will pass or appear to pass through principal focus. This is the figure shown. A ray parallel to principal axis is passing through focus in case of concave mirror. This is the ray parallel to principal axis and it is extended in backward direction to show that it appeared to come from focus in case of convex mirror. Second, a ray passing through focus is reflected back in the direction parallel to principal axis. In this figure, this, is the ray, this ray is passing through focus and after getting reflected, it becomes pa parallel to principal axis. In this figure, this is the incident ray and it is get, after getting reflected, it is parallel to principal axis. Third, a ray passing through center of curvature is reflected back in the same direction as that of incident ray. Here, the ray is incident on the rim mirror and passing through center of curvature. After getting reflected, it rebounds in the same direction. In this, way, in this figure, that is in the case of convex mirror, the ray appears to rebound back after passing through center of curvature. 4. For a ray striking the pole of a mirror, principal axis is the normal. This is the figure. When it strikes the pole, it is reflected back. In this case, the principal axis is its normal. That is, the angles are measured with the principal axis. This is the angle of incidence and this is the angle of refraction. Let us now discuss image formation by concave mirror. Firstly, let us understand what are real and virtual images. When the light rays actually meet, they form real images. When they appear to meet, they form virtual images. Now the image formation by concave mirror. The formation of image by concave mirror depends on the position of object. For example, when the object is at infinity, then the position of image is at focus. Size of the image is highly diminished, that is, it is a point size object, as is shown in the figure. When the light rays come from infinity, they meet at focus and the object is almost equal to a point size. The nature of the image is real and inverted. As the light rays actually meet, it forms a real image and its direction is opposite to the direction of object. That is, if the image, if the object is DA, then the image will be AB, but it is inverted. When the object is beyond center of curvature, but not at infinity, the image is formed between focus and center of cur curvature. The size of the image is diminished. This is the figure. The object is AB placed beyond center of curvature. The light rays parallel to principal axis meet between center of curvature and focus and the image is this B dash A dash. When position of object is at center of curvature, the position of image is center of curvature. The size of the image is same as the size of the object. The nature of the image will be real and inverted. This is the figure. The object AB is placed at center of curvature and after and light rays after getting reflected meet at the center of curvature and hence the object, object's image is formed at center of curvature. As you have already said, the nature of image will be real and inverted. When the object is placed between C and F, that is center of curvature and focus, the position of image is beyond C, that is, the image is formed beyond center of curvature. The size of the image will be greater than that of the object. The image will be real and inverted. This is the image. The object AB is placed between C and F. Our light rays after getting reflected meet beyond C and hence the image is formed beyond center of curvature. Now when the position of object is at focus, the position of image is at infinity. The size of the image is highly enlarged and the nature of image is real and inverted.
Now this is the figure. The object AB is placed at focus and the reflected ray meets at infinity. That is, they never meet. And hence the object's image is of infinite size. The last position can be between pole and focus. The image is formed behind the mirror. Since the image is formed behind the mirror, the nature of the image is virtual and erect as the reflected ray appears to meet behind the mirror. The size of the image will be enlarged. This is the figure. The object AB is placed pole and focus and the reflected ray appears to meet behind the mirror. The dotted line shows that the rays do not actually meet, they just appear to meet and hence the nature of the image is virtual and erect. Thus, uh, this time the image is of same side as that of object. Let us now understand the image formation by convex mirror. When the object is placed at infinity, the image is formed at focus. The size of the image is highly diminished and point size object. As you can see, the reflected ray appears to it, hence the nature of image is virtual and erect. When the object is placed anywhere between infinity and pole of the mirror, the position of the image is always between focus and pole of the mirror. The size of the image is always diminished and again as you can see that the reflected ray appears to meet, the nature of image is virtual and erect. Let us now study about mirror formula and magnification of object. Mirror formula. The mirror formula is 1 upon v plus 1 upon u is equal to 1 upon f, where v is the distance of image from pole of the mirror and u is the distance of object from pole of the mirror. f is the focal length of the mirror. By convention, the left side of the mirror is taken as negative side and the right side and the distance measured in right side is taken as positive. The distance measured above the principal axis is taken as positive and the distance measured below the principal axis are taken as negative. Now magnification. Magnification means the change in size of the object, the change in size of the image with respect to object. It is mathematically defined as m which, uh, which is magnification is equal to height of image upon height of object m is equal to h dash upon h h dash is height of image and h is height of object magnification is also equal to minus v upon u that is negative of distance of image from the pole of the mirror upon distance of object from pole of the mirror so h dash upon h is equal to minus v upon u